So here on the YouTube, I got a uh, comment from a guy asking for some advice. Uh, Mr. David, he has a 85 Bass Tracker and he wants to install a push button slash toggle switch to start the motor. Uh, the one he's looking at only has three wires, one for toggle, two for button, and he wants to know what wires he'd use to do what. So I asked him for a uh, link to the one he purchased, which is this guy. So this is really for a car. You can make it work, but you'll have to buy some stuff. So these kind of little modifications and little kind of specialty wiring stuff is what I kind of like doing. Um, which is actually kind of odd. If I if I buy a motor and it's been customized and kind of weird, then I'm kind of skeptical of the whole thing. Now once I got it, I got no problem doing all kinds of weird stuff like this to it. So that's, that's kind of odd of me, but anywho. So your ignition switch that you're looking at, it's really made for a car. In a, uh, well at least an older engine, but an older car, tractor, even an inboard boat, you basically send power to the coil and that starts, you know, keeps the engine running. You remove power from the coil and the engine dies. This switch would work perfectly fine in that application. Um, also my neighbor at the shop there, he has a tractor that I use all the time. Now it, uh, it's switches on there, they're all broken and long dead. So we start it via a, uh, a jump wire and a screwdriver. This would work perfectly in the tractor for your outboard, not so much. But you can swap out that switch and make it work. You'll just have to, you know, buy one of those switches. So I made a little quick little drawing. Well, first, here is the thing he's looking at, and here's the back of it. So I made a quick little drawing of how you would usually connect this. And here's my little drawing. As you can see, the uh, battery feeds the switch, at least the push button switch. Push button switch then feeds the toggle, the toggle turns the coil on and off, and that push button switch powers the starter. My only real objection to this is when the, regardless of if the ignition switch is on or off, you can still operate the starter. Now, when you're, well, maybe not fishing, but I, I do a lot of like diving and swimming and snorkeling off my boat, and when you're when you're snorkeling around and you hop back in the boat real quick and you want to start it and get away from the rocks you're floating into, you're gonna forget to turn that switch on and just hit the start button and the engine's not gonna start and you're gonna kinda have problems there. So I would prefer to have it to where you need to turn that switch on before the start button works, just because I know myself and I know I will forget and just sit there and hit that start button wondering why the engine's not starting. But anyway, so with this drawing, it'll work perfectly fine in a car or my neighbor's tractor. Now board not so much, but we can swap out the uh, toggle switch here and we'll kind of make it work. So, so all you really need to do is get a double pull, double throw switch. So you don't want, well, these are, these are pretty common. They come in kind of different configurations. You have what's called an on off on, which would be a three positions on the switch. You don't really want that with that flip cover. What you really want is an on on. Those are a little harder to come by. And by on on, I mean you only have two positions up or down. With the on off on, which is standard, you have a middle and then top and bottom position. It'll work fine for you, but it'll be a little funky with that switch cover. But anywho, so here it is on Zorro. Um, you know, 854. It's not really a bad price, but it is kind of expensive for a little switch. You might want to look into your local electronics store, see if they have one of these switches, and then you can actually sit there and play with it, make sure it's only got an up and a down, not the three position. But Radio Shack's long gone, otherwise you just stroll down to there and pick one of these up for probably five bucks. But anywho, so I'm going to uh, kind of make a little custom wiring thing here, or a little drawing. Now, my Photoshop slash paint skills, they're not any good at all, but, you know, kind of bear with me. I'll show you how to wire this up. So if you watch my video on wiring a newer controller to an older outboard, I show in there the wiring harness. Um, you're going to need one of those. There's no way around that one. If you already have a controller, you already have a harness, so you don't really need to worry about that. But I will walk through what you're going to need to do and what those wire colors do. So I drew this little picture. Uh, it's crude, I know, but it gets the point across. Uh, you have a tan wire here, that's for your temp sensor, or gauge sensor, or morning horn. You have a black 
that's just your ground. You have a black with yellow stripe, that is your engine stop. You have a yellow with red stripe, that is your start circuit. You have a solid purple. Now, that is hot with key on, and that sends power back to the stator. and lets you know the key is on, or I don't know exactly how that works on all outboards, but basically it sends power back to the motor. In your 85, you're probably going to need to hook up that purple wire. Um, a lot of smaller, older outboards you won't need to, but I think in your case you're going to have to. You then have a purple with white stripe. That is your choke, and that's going to be a problem you're going to have. You then have a purple with, uh, excuse me, red with purple stripe. That's going to be your fuse 12 volt. And then you have a gray, and that is your tachometer. We won't have to worry about the tachometer here because you're going to hook that up elsewhere. So here's my drawing of the panel with the single pole, single throw switch swapped out for the double pole and a picture of your red harness next to it. So uh, the first thing let's do is hook up the uh, stop circuit since that's probably the easiest one. Now this is assuming you want to use that light, you might as well. So we're going to uh, use the same ground for that one. So let's see here, where's my paint thing? Alright, so here I've hooked up the black wire. Uh, this is going to go to one of the sides of the switch and also the grounds out your light. So now we need the black with yellow, which is going to be our stop. Alright, so here is the black with yellow or the stop circuit switch connected. So this is basically when that switch is down, the engine will, or the, well, the stop circuit will be grounded out and your engine will die. So that's, that's getting the engine off. So we're out to a good start. Now, yellow is actually your starter. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect a yellow wire over to the start switch, or the start button. And here's what that's going to look like. Alright, now we're going to need a purple. The purple is just going to run over to one of the bottom toggles. Alright, over there. Oh, mind you, this is, I know this is coming out as still, but I'm actually just kind of doing it in paint as I go. But anyway, so that's where your purple wire is going to go. Again, that is power with key on. Now we're going to need another purple wire, and this is going to go from the bottom toggle of the switch to the start button. That way when the switch is on, or the ignition is on, that's when your startup button will work. And that's how this is going to look. Now we also want to make that light come on when our switch is on. So for that, we're going to run another purple wire. Now you could tap into the switch, the toggle, but yeah, no real need to do that because it's going to get pretty uh, pretty packed in there. So we're going to jump it from the switch to the light. So the light has a red wire coming off of it. So my little picture here is just going to basically be a red wire. But this will make the light come on when the switch is on. Come on baby, I'm trying to make a video. Alright, so now we need to power this whole circuit and that is where our red with uh, purple stripe is going to come in handy. So the red with purple stripe is going to run across the uh, switch here and go over to the middle toggle and that will power, power everything when the switch is you know, turned on and that is basically how that looks alright so at this point you turn the switch on light comes on and the starter button works the outboard will start at this point you turn it off the light goes off the stop circuit grounds out and the outboard shuts off you now have a functioning uh, kind of control panel. The problem you have now is you don't have a choke or a choke or a primer. That's kind of important to get the thing started. So that's where the unfortunate part comes in. You still need to add another switch. Now if this was built into this toggle it would look a lot better. Unfortunately it's not so we need to add a switch for that one. So here is a picture of how you would wire in a choke switch and now you can start and operate your outboard the way you should. You don't have a warning horn, you don't have a tack, but tack isn't really part of the controller anyway, so it's not really a big deal. But I might as well show you how to hook those up. This is your horn hooked up, and this is your tachometer hooked up, should you choose to use one. As you can see, there's a lot of connections going on in this purple switch, but no big deal. Now, this also doesn't give you neutral safety switch. Um, in order to use that, you're going to have to tap into the one in the controller. It, easily doable. Um, you're just going to have to kind of cut off the uh, the yellow with red stripe wire. It'll run to the safety switch and then continue back over to the start switch. 
it's a good idea to have that on, but with a panel mounted switch, you don't really have a neutral safety. You got to add that in. But this will get your boat working and your switch panel, everything going. My only real issue with this panel and what you did is, well, first of all, the cost. And that's usually the issue with most things. This is $45.95, and I'm assuming it's not free shipping, so you probably had to pay shipping for it, too. Not only that, but you had to add to it. And by add to it, I not only mean replace the switch, but you also need it out of the choke. So you need to add two other buttons, or switches, on top of buying this. Eh, kinda, kinda on the high price side. This isn't something you need to buy. You could probably easily make one of these in your garage with some metal, some paint, and some creativity, and have kind of the same effect. Um, yeah, you get lettering and stuff, but there's all kinds of people out there that make stickers. You probably could have had a sticker company make you up a little vinyl sticker to put over this, and kind of had the uh, same effect. So, yeah, it works, but it could be better. Perhaps when I uh, rebuild my bench when there's not much left of it, and I'll uh, go through how to make your own, eh, maybe. It's a future video thought. And that's pretty much the end of it. So if you, uh, well, if you got any questions or see any problems or need any further guidance, or anybody else out there for that matter, just go ahead and uh, leave a comment or uh, email or whatever you need to do and let me know.